Oh, England. Oh, England. You've done it again. Look it. You don't learn from your mistakes. Jeffrey Boycott. How dare you? How dare you call out West Indies as ordinary, average players? And then your boys turn up and get battered in Barbados. This is your first test review. Three hundred and eighty-one run victory, absolute battering by the Windies. Now, I'm gonna say, England, you're an embarrassment. You're an absolute embarrassment, and you deserve this. You absolutely deserve this because all your ex-pros at the beginning of the series came out talking about how three nil whitewash easy for the series, and Harmison, he even came out and said the match can be done in three days. Well, you were nearly right, Harmison, nearly right. Fourth day, West Indies wrapped up. But you weren't expecting that. Darren Goff, you weren't expecting that. And Jeffrey Boycott. You see that article you wrote calling out West Indies as ordinary, average, how there's going to be an easy victory for England? It has shades of Tony Gregg. You must remember that the West Indians, these guys, if they get on top, they're magnificent cricketers. But if they're down, they grovel to make them grovel, grovel, grovel. I probably know more about facing West Indian fast bowlers than most because uh, having made that silly statement that I was going to make them grovel, um, they, I think, bowled faster to me than they bowled to anyone else. And they did give it to me. They got stuck in and, of course, I was the one who ended up groveling. Tony Craig saying, we're going to grovel. And you saw what happened. And it's happened again. It's not the first time you've been rolled over. Even by West Indies, 2009, Jerome Taylor did it. And before the series, I called out. I said the fast bowlers need to summon the spirit of Jerome Taylor of 2009 at Sabina Park. And boy, did they do that. Obviously, first off, West Indies won the toss, um, opened the bat in, uh, well, bat in the first innings. England didn't play Stuart Broad. Turned out to be a massive mistake. But no excuses, none whatsoever, because regardless, you would expect it to win. 289, we put on the board. Shimron Hetmeyer here in a brilliant 81 to get us to that score. And then the match really turned. Five wicket haul for Kimar Roach. England bowled out for 77. Absolute embarrassment. Absolute embarrassment. They couldn't deal with it. And... It wasn't a case of England giving the wickets away. Yes, there may have been one or two shots that you might say, oh, they could have been better. You know, Moeen Ali, um, I would say Keaton Jennings, but he gets out like that all the time. He's not a very good batsman. So it is what it is. You've got to deal with who you decide to pick. But roll through that team, like, as, a, as Derek Chisora would say, like laxative. <laughs> Actually, you ran through that batting lineup. Yeah, you, you lot mentioned, oh, yeah, we've got, we, we bat deep. Um, the, third, the opening two may not get a lot of runs, but we've got Johnny Bairstow at three, Joe Root, at, um, Ben Stokes, three weird keepers in your team, Folks, Butler and Bairstow. But none of them did anything. Absolutely nothing. Kima Rhodes had a field day with them. Um, jo Alzari Joseph, he picked up a couple. Even Shannon Gabriel. Shannon Gabriel, who's our, the spearhead of our attack, he barely got in on the act. So imagine what's going to happen later on in the series when he gets it together. And then the second innings. Oh, second innings, West Indies, it was all about one man. I mean, that there's a bit of uh, disservice to the likes of Shane Dowrich, uh, Barbadian, born, his home ground, got a century. Um, but it's all about Jason Holder, Captain Holder, who is now the newly ranked uh, best all-rounder in the ICC rankings. And he had a brilliant 2018, and he started 2019 with a bang, a double century. England were hit from pillar to post, plummeled all around the ground. Nobody was safe. And I think it was the third fastest double century against England of about 200 and something balls. They couldn't handle it. Joe Root didn't have a clue which bowler to turn to. Adul Rashid, a specialist spinner. Man got hit out of the attack. Nine overs. Nine overs. He was hitting Anderson over his head. Curran down the ground. 
Nobody was safe. And at, basically, at that point, England was like, well, you know what? It's just a matter of time. We try, we, all we're going to try and do is hold us the declaration as long as possible. Not one wicket was taken on day three of that match. Imagine, 18 wickets were taken on day two and not one was taken on day three. It says it all. Absolutely battered. Came into the, uh, the day four. Um, England were batting by then. And, you know, England picked two spinners, probably hoping that day four, day five, they can come into play. But the spinner who did come into play you lot spoke about him as a part-time spinner. Roston Chase, 8 for 60 from a part-time spinner. Now, one, he needs to start putting some respect on his name because he's a competent bowler. Yeah, no one's saying he's Murray Litteran. No one's saying he's Lance Gibbs. But he's more than a part-time spinner. And he ran through your batting lineup. 8 for 60. It's the second five-wicket haul. So put some respect on Roston Chase's name. England all out, 200 and something, I don't even know the score, I ain't focusing on them. West Indies, 381 run of victory. And I'm, I'm happy. And I'm not just happy because we won the game, of course. But every time the pundits out there, the fans of oppositions, write us off, we come out fighting. Now, it shouldn't take for that for us to play our best because we should always be playing our best. We're playing and representing the country. But you lot don't learn. You just don't learn. Maybe if you keep your mouth shut, we ain't going to perform how we do. And I remember, I think it was um, NASA saying, was saying to Ian Bishop, maybe he just needs to make some fake quotes at the start of every test, saying, oh, a, a newspaper hair or a journalist hair said this about the team or that about the team. Because that saves the captain and the, the manager from doing the team tour. You just pinned it up on the, um, the dressing room and that will motivate the players. So many times we've been written off as a nation, spoken about, yes, we're, you know, we're a shadow of the glory days, etc. But you can't even beat the shadow. That's what you're telling me. You can't even beat the shadow. What an embarrassment. Embarrassing. Yeah, you went to Sri Lanka, you won 3 0, average Sri Lankan side, and you thought you could come here and roll us over. And then we get to the Sky Studios, and I'm watching the coverage. Paul Collingwood's in there. Um, Alex Stewart, Graham Ford, a bag of excuses, a bag of excuses. Well, I'm here. Oh, the preparation wasn't right. Uh, the facilities ain't great. You knew all of this before you came. You knew all of this and still predicted a 3-0 victory. So you can't use that as an excuse. It's like Man City going to a non-league team in the FA Cup and complaining that the, the, the dressing room is dingy and the showers are rusty. This is what come to expect when you're playing at this level. It's not going to be the same everywhere you go. Everyone ain't got the money um, a wash like the ECB and the Australian Cricket Board in India. Everyone ain't like that. So you deal with the conditions. Equally, as uh, Graves, the West Indies Cricket Board chairman, came out and said, we offered you a first-class game. You didn't take it. You took two games against the West Indies Cricket Board 11 and some, on some PRPR games. And... You thought that was enough preparation. You obviously underestimated or overestimated, or maybe both, your team and our team. And this is the predicament we're in. It ain't about facilities. It ain't about preparation because you thought everything was cushy. Second in the world in tests. You're going to the bottom-ranked team. Um, we've beaten them before. We'll beat them again. But remember, you ain't beaten us in, in the Caribbean. I said it before. Since 2004, and that's the only one time since the Wisdom Trophy was created in 1965. What gave you the right to think you come over here and walk over us? Now, of course, there's two tests left. You could win them. But I'm confident we ain't losing this series. We only need to at least draw one of them. If we win another test, then obviously we've won the three-match series. But I'm confident we ain't losing. There's something special about us playing at home against England. Um, and we raise our game for that. To be fair, when we play England anywhere, play the T20 uh, final of 2016, for example, the ICC Champions Trophy final of 2004, just to name a couple. Um, but on West Indies, as I said, brilliant man of the match performance from Jason Holder, um, led from the front as captain. You know, not much I can criticize when it comes to those two arts, the bowling 
and the batting. The, the, for me, his field placements, um, his ta tactics on the field need improving. We was, we set England 628 to win. There was no reason why we shouldn't have had a short leg and three slips in the gully throughout the whole innings because they were never going to chase it down. It's only a matter about um, getting the 10 wickets. So you, we just need to be a bit more attacking, more proactive. He seemed to be very uh, reactive. You know, a ball went through the first slip position, he plugs in the first slip. The ball goes through a bit wider, he moves that person there and then he's, he's chasing the ball as opposed to setting the plans and saying, this is how we're going to bowl. If the ball goes through a gap, it goes through the gap, but you keep, you stick to the plans that you set before you left the dressing room um, and they will pay off in the end. As the game plodded on, he, uh, he started getting a bit more attacking, but we need to set that from the beginning, set that, that, that attacking mindset from the start. And if you have to drag it back a bit more defensive, do so, not the other way around, because you let the batsman get in. Um, as I said, Shimron hit my at the beginning when I did my preview. He is an absolute wonderful talent. Um, one that we need to make sure we nurture and keep in West Indies cricket in the longer formats of the game. We know he's already got the um, the ability to play the short format. We saw it in the Caribbean uh, Premier League 2020 league. Um, but he's got a, a very good 81 low down the order. I'm wondering if we can maybe push him up one place, um, especially if... Chase is going to be uh, the spinner going into the next games and um, well, the next test in Antigua. Um, but you know, 22 years old, he did very well batting with the low order, scoring some quick runs, and getting up, up to a good target uh, sorry, a good uh, total in the first innings. Um, Shane Dowrich, of course, the keeper, uh, got his century at his home ground. Him and uh, Holder shared a 295 run partnership, um, which really set up. A comfortable victory in the end. Um, Darren Bravo, obviously I was excited that he returned to the squad and we just need to keep him in there and let him play his way back into form. He's only This is only his second first class game since uh, in the last two years. So he was never going to come in and, and be you know flamboyant and, and take the attack to the bowling and, and be as comfortable as he looked before um, he was ostracised from the team. So we just have to make sure we keep him in there. As I said, just looking at the batting lineup, it looks that much stronger with uh, Bravo coming in at number three. Sorry, coming at number four. Hope is at number three. But it's good that we've got runs from all over the team. You know, a few 50s and, and starts anyway from the top, starting with Joe Campbell in the first innings, he got 40. Um, Brathway got a few, you know, dead in the new ball early on. Hope hit a 50 as did Chase as well. Um, so we just need to, at the top of the order, turn those 50s into 100s, and we know the lower order can do more than do their bit um, going forward. Second test starts on Thursday in Antigua. It's going to be interesting to see the pitch that is uh, produced, whether we go for a very similar one um, in Barbados, or we make it a bit slower, a bit easier to bat on, harder to bowl on, um, to possibly, you know, give us every opportunity to, to at least keep the one nil lead for the next two remaining tests. But whatever test uh, pitch we produce, I'm going to be confident because we are on a high after that brilliant victory. England have got a lot of work in, a work to do behind the scenes, a lot to, um, a lot of decisions to make in terms of personnel, whether it's the opening batsman choices the bowling uh, selection balance, whether they're going to go with two spinners or not, and the personnel, of course. So we are in a good place. I'm not going to say it's, oh, uh, you know, a turning point because we've been here before. We've got very good victories, but this is one of our best victories in a long, long time. As a matter of fact, I don't actually remember a better victory, a more convincing victory than this in a long time from start to finish. Um... All I've got to say is, you know, big up the boys out in Barbados, move on to Antigua and put these Englishmen in their place. Next time, keep your mouth shut. That's it from me. Make sure you check out the rest of our videos. Hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you soon.